What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Spencer. I have not done a tier list in a really long time, actually, so I wanted to do that. And I'm going to release a couple of other kinds of videos, not just deck profiles and gameplay videos. I've done a lot of those recently, which is fine, but yeah, I like to do other stuff, too. And also, this gives me a chance to talk about kind of the format as I see it. When I used to make these videos a while ago, like they are always like my most controversial. I don't mean to make them that way. And more of anything, it's just an open discussion. Like, so you guys can go in the comment section and tell me, I believe this, this, that, and that. And it's fun to talk about. But yeah, we'll go ahead and get into it. So we have insects here, insector, uh, or just all bugs in general. It's kind of one archetype now. This deck's fine. It's okay. Um... It's more rogue. I mean, it loses to Nibiru, but, you know, a lot of these kinds of decks do, and I think that's what makes it from being, like, truly at the top, you know. But I do, I do think that it's viable to beat any deck just because of how many extenders there are in there. And it's just your end boards aren't the most powerful in the world, especially to some of the more meta, you know, decks out here. Nonetheless, I think it can do a lot of damage, and you got to be prepared to, to face it. Uh, when you're going to a competitive event, at least in my opinion, some people will be playing it. Um, adding Nister kind of falls in the same category as Bugs, but they have even less powerful on boards. I know they like to go second, but any deck that's like mega reliant on combos, and they made a really hard push for adding Nister. It's, I just don't think it's happening. This deck really loses to Nibiru. I've seen this deck kind of do some stuff without it. These are just two hand trap, you know, just like open. Like if you hit them with a big hand trap like Joel, then they're probably not playing that turn. Uh, even though that like some of them may have better end boards than the actual meta decks, it's just <laughs> playing in meta seems to be less about like how good of an end board you got to have a good end board, but it, it's a lot more about like okay, assuming your opponent hand traps you, what else can you do so you don't lose, or can you combo through that? I just don't think these decks can do that very reliably. Uh, this looks like chur um, geez, uh, pure tri brigade. Um, gosh, it's just crazy. Like this deck was like the format a while ago, but uh, the Zodiac tri brigade stuff. Uh, but a lot of his engines have been taken away. I think some of them are still playing Zodiac, to be honest with you. But without Dryden, it's just kind of floating out there. It's not bad, but it's definitely underpowered when you compare. It to to Lyralisk. I don't even know if it deserves to be in Rogue. It's like, it's just less and less people are going to be playing this. I think I'm going to put it in... Ugh, at the same time, it feels like this deck can really beat you. I don't know. This one is kind of in between Rogue and Competitive. How does that sound? Uh, unless I'm just dead wrong, and everyone thinks Pure Tri Brigade is still that gas, but it hasn't seemed that way to me. Now, if you were to take this into, like, Casual, and you, you would probably cream anybody, but... I'm trying to frame this in the mind of, like, meta. Uh, Dragon Link. This is another just... Mm, where does this get put? Because you would have thought that this deck would just be dead. Like, just dead in the water. Uh, but it's it's actually still pretty nice. I want to put it in Tier 2. Uh, I think it's okay there. I mean, of these three combo decks, I definitely think this one's the best. Access to Quick Launch. Access to Omni Gates. Hot Red is also one of the bigger... Uh, boss monsters of the deck after you know milling some five cards to your deck you can more reliably go into your chaos stuff to like maybe shuffle a card from your opponent's hand so they're starting with one less like i just think that your end boards are the best and uh, i feel like this kind of is fitting when it comes to combo because there aren't a lot of combo decks left out here like uh except for maybe Lyrilis, if you want to call that combo um cyber dragon <laughs> that's silly um cyber dragon abc <laughs> and uh, uh it's it's fine. I mean, this deck does I mean, everything else, you know. Ugh, I don't know. I mean, the deck that I play with Cyber Dragon is able to put up, like, three hard boss monsters, but, like, a Dark Moon of more just completely destroys it and hand traps, too. This is probably everything else. I don't think it's going to be making any noise. Although, I will say, uh, there are a lot of, like, trap-heavy versions of the deck uh, with, like, Dogmatica. I've seen that, too, and that's okay. Um, but other than that, I just don't think it's going to be doing anything. Uh, Flu and Reese. I've been talking about this deck recently. I played it, uh, my own weird version. But I know most play like you know um, with an extra deck to, for more consistency. Um, this is this is definitely rogue. It's not going to be meta just because it hard loses to Ash and 
pretty much any hand trap there when it comes to your normal summon. Now you do play cross out designator, but you're not always going to draw that right. But still, if you're um, if you do actually open up cross out designator right, and you're able to stop your opponent and you're able to make your plays go through, it has one of the best end boards um, of this format. Like a barrier statue next turn is going to turn into an apex avian. And then you also have access to the Harpy's Trap, which is, like, extremely overpowered, pretty much. So, yeah, that's really good. Um, Guru. Like, some decks I, I'll talk about have just, like, fallen out of favor. Like, people just aren't playing it in competitive scenes, from what I've seen. And I think Guru kind of falls in that category. Uh, but it's it could be overwhelming to your opponent, you know. There's the Red Eyes version, which is, like, I think probably the definitive version. Because you can activate Red Eyes Fusion and then still set Guru uh, which is huge, which is really nice. Kind of like weird synergy there. Uh, but, you know, Lightning Storm's a thing, evenly matched the thing. And I feel like people are just kind of ready to play whatever dot deck comes with, like, um, Floodgates. Okay, so these next three I'm just going to put together. Um, Dogmatic Invoke Shadal. And this is, like, probably the most played deck of, like... When it comes to competitive, it feels like like this is like the staple meta deck, uh, but it never really seems to win anything. I, I actually am gonna put it in tier two. This may be like the first like super duper wrong opinion that I've made um, on this tier list, but yeah, this is my hot take. I love this engine, by the way. You guys know I play the hell out of it, so it's not just really like oh I hate you know invoke players. I think it's fine. I think any deck that you play is fine. I really don't judge people. I think it's weird that people do that. It's like. It's just the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! People can do whatever they want. Uh, but it just feels like it, it, it's a little underpowered sometimes. Like, it doesn't push forward enough. And then other times, you know, you open up Nadir Servant, um, Magical Meltdown, and, you know, like, all these other cards. Like, all your engine pieces, and then you just don't lose. But other times it feels like, ooh, maybe I can make Venus Enforcer pass. And I just don't know if that's enough to win tournaments consistently. Grand Maju, just everything else. I guess we don't really need to talk about that too much. Um, Salomon Grades, I'm definitely putting this competitive. Um, close to Rogue, TBH. Uh, you know, they have access to Mirage Stallio again. Also, Firewall Dragon, which I personally like. It's a compulsory evacuation for two. Um, if you do your combo, right? Or at least one. And I think that's an amazing effect. I, I really think it's underrated. Uh, something I'll explore more. I haven't gone over the deck since Mirage Dalio came out, so that'll be something that I'll look at on the channel soon, uh, but nonetheless, this is a deck that I think really can win any matchup. It's beatable, but it can take you by surprise if you're not ready for it. Sky Striker, it's in Rogue, you know, Engage is insane, we all know that, but if you're forced to go first, it's like Shizuku pass, you know, set Widow Anchor, you're going to lose a lot of duels, man. Uh, so that's that's really why it's like that. And if you are going second, sometimes your opponent will have these super nasty end boards that you just really are not going to have a chance to fight through. But it is versatile. Uh, you know, having spells is really, really nice. But with Imperial Order in everybody's side deck, uh, it's just it's not going to work out for you in terms of, like, top-tier success. Phantom Knights. This is another really popular deck, but truthfully, I just, I don't really get it. Uh, I think it's alright. I'll put it in Tier 2 at least. I know, you know, some of the plays they want to make, but the brick ability in this deck is too much, man. Some of the Phantom Knights stuff is bricky. Uh, well, <laughs> I know it's all Phantom Knights, but Ancient Cloaks isn't really great to have in your opening hand. And You know, they do have a lot of great extenders, but you're playing like Fog Blade and all this other stuff in there that you just don't really want to see in your open. And I feel like you're going to see it enough to impede your plays. Uh, so, this could even maybe go on Rogue, but they do have some really powerful boards, especially when it comes to, like, Artifact Lancia. Dinos. This is one of those decks that I think people just aren't playing. Like, they just straight up gave up on the strategy. Um, I don't really know where it's placed, because I just haven't seen people playing it. Like, the Scrap Engine, I think, is really good. Um, and I think people would like to play that, but Misket 1 really undermines this. I'm putting it in Rogue. <laughs> I might have to look at Dino soon. I, I don't know. There's something missing here, and I feel like this deck should still be relevant. Heroes. I don't know, man. Like, I'm not putting heroes on the same level as, like, Tri Brigade. Um, it's fine. I know people love heroes. It's a dedicated archetype, but... Uh, I mean, maybe you could put it in competitive, but... 
Like, this thing isn't topping anywhere, right? Like, I feel like once a year, like, these could top an event or something like that. And I just don't see heroes being in that same category, you know? It's or, or, like, getting a top 16. I just don't see heroes doing that anytime soon. Evil Twin. This deck, man, is really just... It's actually kind of good, uh, in my opinion. Nothing too crazy, but just mad consistent with so many hand traps that you just wouldn't know what to do with them. Well, you use them. That's what you do with them. You stop your opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, the only thing keeping this from Tier 1, in my opinion, is like... Sometimes, like, people are able to play through hand traps, and if it's just, like, normal summon and evil twin and you get disrupted, you just, like, hard lose. So, it's kind of a weird balance. Trouble Sunny's out. Actually, it's affordable. I looked it up on TCG Player. Uh, I think I actually have the tab open here. Yeah, it's, like, $7. That's pretty sick, in my opinion. So, shout out to evil twin. I don't think any of their cards in their engine are expensive either. This is one of the best competitive budget decks, I think. And I may have to do that video soon, just... My favorite competitive budget decks, so, <laughs> something like that. Uh, okay, so now we're going into Leerless. Uh, pretty much this is Leerless Tri Brigade. There are some pure versions. I'm not a huge fan of those. The The people who are playing meta, it seems, are playing with Tri Brigade, and the deck is insane. I saw this deck get... I saw a mirror match. They got Draw and Lockbird. They were still going to make Apex, Avian, and Jubble Dragon Lords. Through that, and then... The crazy thing is, is that Leerless Tri Brigade deck was able to break that board and set up their own board after. <laughs> so that's how good this deck is. It just eats disruption and it somehow finds a way to continue comboing through with a lot of hand traps. I mean, yeah, this is definitely a tier one deck. It's it, what it's what feels like this is above everything else. Like it's just hard to like keep this thing from rolling, uh, which makes it tier one. And I don't think there are a lot of tier one decks. And also, I don't think this is a format where one deck's going to dominate. But I do feel like this is a step above the rest, especially if it gets the right matchups going into a competitive event. I think you'll see a lot of tops with it. Drytron. Another one of those decks I feel like people just kind of put down. Um, there's a lot of reprints. So this deck is super affordable, can be super fun, but it does brick. And I've seen it brick many times. Uh, if you don't open up, you know, certain names or like, you know, two Drytrons basically you're probably not playing the, your churn and also you know dd crow can be really really like terrible against you and it feels like people are kind of more prepared which is crazy to say for an archetype that puts up an infinite amount of negates but there are ways to stop it from getting there right but nonetheless it is still good with such a great end board you know dark world and more also but the great thing is is about dry trying to dark world and more the ultimateness you probably also have like two heralds in hand, which is all, enough to stop most decks, right? Uh, Speedroids. I'll put this in everything else, but I do think it's worth noting that this deck is pretty decent now. I mean, the new support really does put it on another level for sure. Like, it takes it from being almost unplayable to, like, kind of unplayable to, wow, yeah, no, you can do some combos here, you can make some damage, but it's certainly not enough. And when it comes to, you know, disrupting combo decks, like, this is definitely at the top of the list. In terms of like being able to just stop them in their tracks. Virtual world. Yeah, it just feels like you know, you're able to do some things, <laughs> stuff and things like Shen Shen and Chu Che. That'll win you some duels right there. But if that's the what feels like the best thing you can do, and maybe a crystal wing synchro dragon, you know, uh, that's probably not gonna be enough. Like this is another competitive um, budget archetype that will probably be on that list too <laughs> i'm like almost previewing that list as i'm doing this but yeah i think rogue is fine for it and i i really feel like this could be a deck maybe that you just see um like top bubble every once in a while a couple times a year gets people excited people buy the cards but yeah luckily there's reprints for everything now so it's good eldlich um i'm gonna assume or i guess in the context of this video it's gonna be the eldlich dogmatica de deck that i built or that type of deck the floodgate eldlich deck uh, it's competitive. I don't think it's going to be in Rogue. Uh, I think it could be, but it'd have to see some more results. Like it, a lot of people are just are. It's kind of floating around. It's it's doing well. People, some people aren't you know ready to play against it. So that, that'll help you get some wins. I think it has a chance to be in Rogue. I really do. But for now, I think competitive is fine. Um, I feel like you can take this comfortably into any you know matchup. In you know, you'll just have to take some wins and losses in between. Um, Dolce. 
I just, I, this is one of the decks I feel like people just, like, don't even understand what it does. And there's only, like, a few dedicated players who do it. But whenever, whenever I see it in action, it always seems so good. But I don't know what it is about this deck that it's just not keeping grasp of people's attention and, and not being played more. It's certainly competitive. Uh, I just, I don't know if it's on this level. And certainly people aren't even giving it a chance to be. So I think it's pretty decent there. Altergeist, kind of the same category as Guru. Like, literally, what's the difference between these decks? <laughs> For the most part, it's like, which engine do you think is better? I kind of lean towards Guru. Um, this deck is super bricky. Like, even more bricky than Guru. So that's, I think that's kind of appropriate. Sword Soul. Uh, this, uh, it does, I don't even know if it really actually does belong in Tier 1, but... This is, falls into the category of maybe not the greatest end board ever, but consistent, man. Consistent as hell. Like, it's that's the end board that you get. The, the Omni Negate plus the Monster Negate plus the two pops from the trap. Like, they're able to make that so many times. And the other thing that makes this deck so good is that it's able to push for lethal in one turn. Not all decks can do that. This one definitely falls in that category. It will swarm you. And it will go into some synchros and you will be dead before you know it. That's what I feel like makes it tier one. They're able to do the same thing all the time, push for a game. Like those two are going to take you pretty far, I think, in these tournaments. Um, but I do think it's also beatable. I think all these are beatable. This one feels like the least beatable, but it, it definitely can. It's not the greatest deck in the world. Um, it actually has a kind of a bad matchup against Invoke Shadal. So I think that's what kind of keeps it in check versus all these other decks. And then Prank Kids. Um, people pretty much threw this deck in the garbage after Miyamu was put to one, but I feel like it's still able to do its plays, and, um, I think, actually, the Ad Emancipator version, I feel like Prank Kids Ad Emancipator is such an exaggerated thing, it's really just used as a play starter, but, yeah, um, I think Rogue is, like, I don't think it's, I think it's a league above these, for sure, or maybe I'm wrong, what do you guys think about Prank Kids, like, where would you even place it, have you ever seen anyone playing it after the ban list, I don't know, I haven't. Um, but yeah, that is this uh, little tier list here. I'm sure some of you vehemently disagree with my opinion, but that's what the comment section um, comment section is for. But yeah, other than that, that's going to do it for today's video, and I'll see you guys next time.